Wow. All right, so last year, Ken and the HRD team took on kind of a large feat, and that was modernizing a Group A Escort into something that was a little bit more competitive. And last year was the first year of development, and they learned a lot, and for this year, they're changing a lot. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. This thing, and Ken's gonna tell us about it. Yay, you look excited. Yay, Kazi. <laughs> Kazi version two. All right, so last year, the whole idea was take a Group A car, modernize it, get it out on stage, and learn a lot. Yeah. Because you did, you learned a lot, right? Yeah. What'd you learn last year? I learned it's a heavy car. I learned that we needed more performance, and I loved what we did with modernizing this car and making it as if the current Ford World Rally team would design this car if this car came out today. But the unfortunate thing about it was that uh, it was built and finished right before the first event. So before I raced 100 acre wood last year, I had all of 40 <laughs> test miles on it. So the first couple of events, we had some mechanical issues. I tried to ignore it. Basically, we need to, we need to do some more testing. And that's life, that's what happens. Normally cars have thousands of miles on them before you actually go out and race them. We had 40. I mean, this car was originally campaigned in the early 90s, right? 1993. Yeah. You know, it was completely different technology back then. I yeah. mean, everything from turbo tuning to uh, suspension, all of that. So that's a lot of what yeah. you guys have tried to attack. Yeah, and there were a lot of things on the car that were unreliable from the electronic diffs that we did have issues with, with the version one that we raced, to even when I, I had a simple rollover and the car burned to the ground, that was a fuel rail issue that was, that happened back in the 90s to a bunch of these cars. So it was those things that we modernized, you know, just going to simple mechanical diffs. We never have an issue with the diffs and they work great. In a way, you've been kind of spoiled because you've only been driving like top of the line WRC, the best cars that have been made for rally. So when you first got into this, I remember you getting out and it was kind of like a little bit of a meet your heroes moment. When it came to rally, yes. You've I always been involved in a top level, brand new car, top level suspension, cause, and all that. I mean, even the HFHV. But even those don't end up being perfect all the time. Either. They never do. But that was part of the challenge that we knew would happen by taking this car and doing what we did to it, that there, it wasn't gonna be perfect. So yes, you are correct. But that's what happened this winter. We were able to make that list Derek Doncey and myself, uh, Derek being our race director for Hoonigan Racing. We need to do some more testing. We made a list that this is what we're gonna do in the off season. We did that, we've done testing, and here we are, brand new livery by Troy Lee. This is a Troy Lee designed livery based off some of his current motocross gear with a bit of a flair that he designed into it. So yeah, I enjoy working with Troy Lee. He's been my helmet painter uh, for, I don't know, over a decade. Uh, and a friend for about three decades. So it's been great to work with him, not only uh, continuing him painting my helmets and supplying me with moto and mountain bike gear, but doing livery on my Kazi. So this is the second year in a row with Troy Lee doing the livery. And I, I think it came out really good. It really has quite a moto feel that ties directly into some of his current gear. If you didn't grow up in the 90s like I did, then you don't know that every kid's dream, whether you rode BMX or motocross, was to have a Troy Lee painted lid. So, yeah. I mean, think about it. Not only yeah. do you, have you had Troy Lee painted lids for the past decade, yeah. now you have a Troy Lee designed car, so it's, yeah. it's pretty cool. Back in the day, when I just rode moto before I started racing cars, I'd ask Troy, hey, can I get a helmet painted? And he would say, I don't really have time for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, how things have changed. <laughs> the second thing that really stands out is this little piece of art right here. A different take on the rally pod. So Rigid is a new partner of the team. We had an old school rally pod, you know, that's a fiberglass pod with big lights in it. And it was great, we used it last year. And it was the traditional look from rally in the 90s. But one thing I didn't like about that was we'd modernized the car, you know, all around to look like a modern car, but we still had this kind of really big bulbous headlight. Rigid as a brand new partner came up with this design. It's very modern. It gives us more light than those old lights. And it looks tech, it looks amazing. They did an incredible job. So they actually came out to our test about a month ago 
um, in Arizona because they're based in Arizona. They brought us a bunch of designs. They measured the hood. We met with them on what we were trying to accomplish. They came back with some very cool illustrations and then we picked which one we thought would work and they developed it and delivered it today at the burn yard. And by the way, that guy came in a really cool F-350 Power Stroke, so I really appreciate that, man. It was a white version of my old truck, Coal Truckle. So, it's a very nice framework, very simply bolted onto the hood. And uh, one very cool feature that they put on here is they actually put HHIC into the framework. Oh, wow, look at that. HHIC. What's that stand for, Brian? You came up with that? Head who to get in charge. <laughs> but yeah, so the... These two beams actually project far down the stage. And you know, as we're racing down, I need to see, as we're going 100 miles an hour, that next corner. And then these two outside ones actually give a bit more of a flood out on the sides. I think we might add some more lower in the front bumper. Like around later. the corner yeah. type stuff. So that we can even project more. So when we're sideways around the corner, you can see. Um, but yeah. If you didn't catch that sideways brag, it was lights on the side so when you're sideways you can still see where you're going. <laughs> that's like those Andreas cars that put wipers on the side window. I respect that. But that's reality. So I've used rigids for years now, you know, on all my trucks and uh, Can-Ams, but now to actually have them as a partner with the team and developing cool stuff for our race cars, uh, I'm really stoked. And we have actually some fun, crazy ideas of things outside the race cars that I'm going to do with them too. So that'll be a whole nother episode coming up in the next couple of months. So before we get under the hood, yeah. the exhaust is now coming out the back of the car and it looks quite different. It looks pretty futuristic actually, which is actually very spot on for the 90s because the 90s <laughs> thought era of the future was now. So we have a new partnership with Borla, Borla Exhaust. They built a beautiful exhaust. So this car went to Southern California and they custom designed and built us a brand new exhaust for this car. Last year, we actually had two options of exhaust for this car. We had a rear exit, which like say for Rally in America, we'd have to use. And then we had side exits for crazy events like Rally Legend in San Marino. The side exits were actually very loud in the car. It was harder for me to hear the co-driver and it was so much heat right there, it was damaging the side panels of the car. So we decided that for this year to be a bit more efficient, just go for one design, uh, and it's that rear exit. And- We went and filmed it, so uh, cut to that footage now, and you actually get to watch them install it. Well, now that we have an exhaust partner, I think we should have multiple tips for this thing because Borla makes some super rad, like round tips with carbon fiber. You like my hands going there? <laughs> Is that what you're looking at? No, I was making that face because that's the ultimate flex. You're saying you're gonna bring a different exhaust to every event. Oh, that's wait, like a whole you, new flex. You made up the every event thing. I was just <laughs> well, saying. Well, that's what you're doing now. That's the move. Well, they make a lot of really rad tips, and I like what they've done here. It's a very cool design, but I'd like to see some carbon fiber tips there, maybe some anodized tips. I like exhaust. I like Borla, and I think that. I think that we need some more options. So maybe comment below on some options that you guys would like to see on the back of the Kazi. We actually have a current WRC Viesta roof scoop. Uh, and reason being is the old roof scoop that was on this car was so small that we weren't getting much air inside. It was actually quite hot inside this car this past year. So I need more air. So we got this new roof scoop. On top of that, we saved about 30 kilos of weight by going through a bunch of carbon fiber panels. So fenders, hood, rear panel, basically lighten the car, just doing it in a very simple, smart ways. Um, on top of that too, we had sort of a modern headlight on the car last year, and I didn't like it. One of the things about the Kazi to me is that wing. And the dual rounds. Yeah, these uh, hood vents are very classic Kazi, but also just the very simple I mean, it's such nice. a 90s thing to have dual rounds, whether it was yeah. Fords, Volkswagens, like that was such a rally inspired look. They would take the headlights out and yeah. put those in. So I didn't like that change last year, but we just never had time to change it back. So we've made that change now. To me, it's just a 
The front end just looks more classic now, so that's something I'm very happy about. Now let's open the hood. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it doesn't. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Nice setup. Yeah, th this is just not something you see in rally cars. Usually there's like just a tethered wire, <laughs> some duct tape, a few zip ties. See, in there you can see the carbon fiber hood. Yep. It's beautiful. It's cool. Got a couple more horses hanging out in here. Yeah, well, the thing is that in this off season, we were able to do some development with the turbo and camshaft. The big changes in the engine bay is, is a new turbo that just works better for this setup, along with a new camshaft that has a higher lift, and it just makes the engine feel more alive. And it was something that we just tried out, among other things, at a test, and it just really worked well. The car sounds better, the car revs better, and like I said, the feeling for me sitting in the driving seat, it just feels more alive. And also the, the intercooler and radiator have been improved. Uh, we did have some heat issues last year, so from doing everything like Chimkana, where we're putting out a lot more horsepower, uh, to racing short, very high intense stages like in San Marino, it, this will help because we just won't have the same temperature issues. We have designed some new carbon fiber bits that aren't in here, so hopefully by the time this video gets edited, we can drop those in. So how's it drive? Because I know you got to drive it before we put the livery on it. About a month ago, we took the car to Arizona, uh, did some testing for two days on a very fun desert rally stage. Testing went exceptionally well. We got uh, definitely some performance improvements, so let's show that. Hello from the middle of Arizona. You can see cactus, cactus on the hill. We're here in Arizona to test for two days to get the Ford Escort Kazi V2 ready for the 2020 season of racing. And we're making a bunch of improvements on the car, of stuff that we couldn't get done last year as it was brand new. So two days of testing here in Arizona. Here because the weather's really good this time of year, a lot of the test roads we normally use are either in crappy conditions right now or under snow. So that's why we're here in Arizona. So. Watch some testing footage. Five, four, three, two, one. V2, left five plus, 30, crusty to right five plus, and left four plus, 50. Left four plus over jump, high end, to right four plus long. Open Trident's 5 in 30, left 6 in 50. Into crest, into right five plus, fifty right. Into jump, stay in fifty, right five plus, one hundred line. So two last questions. What? What's next for the car? Where are you going first? And uh, is that shirt available yet? Because everyone, <laughs> everyone's going to be asking. I, I anyway. like the long sleeve. I'm very stoked on this. Um, the first event of the year is WRC Mexico. It's one of my favorite events. Yes. The Wild West. Love WRC uh, Mexico. So good. Going back to where we shot Gymkhana 10. Yep. So really stoked to be going down. It's just one of my favorite events in the world. Guanajuato is amazing. Yeah. It's, it feels like what Group B used to be like. Like yeah. there's still just m mobs of people on the side of the street. And yeah. it is very Wild West. And so they have a national class. So I'll be entered in that. Um, racing, you know, just behind all the WRC cars and R5s. So that's the first event of the year. Uh, and after that, we have Barbados. So it's going to be a very cool year. And yes, the new shirt, 
Uh, should be available soon. Of course, it always takes a while for all our sponsors to approve everything. <laughs> so that's, that's why this stuff doesn't come out right at the beginning of the season. We gotta wait for those approvals. Can block but, with the truth. Good luck in Mexico, bud. I don't thanks. know if I'm coming. I hope I am. It's, it's seriously my favorite event. I love that. Yeah. Quick story. I went to WRC Mexico as my first WRC event and I thought to myself, oh man, I can't wait to go to Europe. It's going to be so much better. And then I went and I did like eight other rounds of WRC that year and I realized that Mexico was my favorite event. Yeah. So there's, some might of the roads might be better in other places, but from a spectator, you can't beat Mexico. Well, think about it. This year I get to do WRC Mexico and WRC New Zealand. Oh, those are so just two, two great ones on the calendar. in the world. So one of the wildest events, Mexico and uh, New Zealand was some of the, just the best rally roads in the world. Anyway, Ken, thank you very much for the walk around. Good luck in Mexico. Tell people I should be there because I don't think I'm originally planned to go there. <laughs> so I think I have other business to worry about. But anyway. I'll just call your just, just, just move out of the way. The car is what's cool. <laughs> All right. And good night. Good night.